Well, we got ourselves another Aaron Gill that we are headed into right now. As we're gonna, dude, this stage is so hot. This is one of the best stages I think I've ever seen, if not the best stage for PUBG, maybe even. It is so good. Let's get ourselves over into Aaron Gill. We still got two more to roll through, and if anything has been said for the previous couple of games, let's keep the train rolling as we got a straight up north-south path plane, so everything on the table. Tasty, tasty treats for anybody that wants it. This is the most even plane we've actually seen all day uh, on any of the maps as far as uh, making sure the teams can pretty much jump where they want to. Again, Forrest opting for one of my favorite places towards Sarki, uh, and then we have LG also opting for a solver drop here. Yeah, um, no surprise. I mean, maybe it's just going to be a, it's one of their secondary drops that we can see happen mm -hmm. a lot. Still, we're getting more and more love is it's just got a lot of different opportune moments you can play from. Positionally wise, uh, Circle tends to like to go up there or the Badlands just the west, or you just also have a lot of rotation points out. There's a lot of good opportunities going all the way from down to no lean, the top of Stalber itself. You get a bit of everything whenever you go over there. Yeah, and I will also say, just talking about some of our circles, <laughs> I don't know what they've been doing. That last shift as well down to the south and Milta was was probably one of the wilder shifts. Even the Tango Circle shift down to the south was nuts. Uh, I was going to say, we got two people in that car, but it uh, looks like they're just going to opt away from it. Uh, they're at five, going to roll in, and I don't know if you want to commit in too much of that. Is that just is that a machete in hand? Hella, like Hella does have a machete. Be careful. Yeah, I know. Get the back of the car, maybe start taking some swings. Use the tree to your advantage. Now, finally, a couple of pot shots are going to come out. Can he manage to juke it? Yes, he can, and is going to manage oh, but dodge out. Half Pong, though, has the angle there, and they are harassing very early this team there. A, GP. Uh, I mean, given the fact that the circle is uh, about as far shifted off oh, the map as you can get. Uh, now let's just go ahead and bring in more fun. So I'm going to go ahead and pick this one up. Their ton five is like, nah, man, we want this. Shot's coming out. Are we going to see any form of machete? No. You actually hit him with it, I think. Yeah, but yeah. Pick up the machete. Give it respect. This is an awkward fight. GP definitely did not want to be in the receiving end of this, but yeah, they're they're going to lose two there. I mean, two kills early for T5, but feeling pretty, pretty good out of it. And you can see, going to be shifting in, especially whenever you look at the fact that they were in the thick, in with LG, Twisted Minds, that pushed them up ahead. And looking at the circle post here, it is going to be a quarry circle, actually. West Coast, it's been a while since we've been here. Yeah, and uh, a lot of different opportunity moments as we can look through. Uh, a lot of this also is going to be field. So potential of that brewing is T5, you got yourself two kills, but now you're just kind of in an awkward spot. I guess what? Just let your teammates loot for a second, then come support. The other members of GP are playing more to the, I guess, Georgia pole siding. They've got the North George section where we see it's going to be uh, Daku as well as Hush. Uh, T5 does have one other member that's going to be over there, and the rest of T5 looks like now they're finally going to start getting into their looting group. Yeah, now looking at a few of these teams as well, obviously Falcon's going to be in a really great position here as they're looting around Prim and just to the east of Quarry. The Expendables as well have this kind of old West Coast Tempo Storm uh, split, if you will. It's been a long time since we've said their names or seen them, but that's going to be that nice West Coast split between Gatka, God Compounds, as well as uh, some of the compounds on the coast. Yeah, I still see wherever uh, Tanfu is at in my brain. It is Tempo Compound, and I can't make <laughs> it not that. Uh, LG is going to be uh, actually regrouping and heading down to Milta. So while they did get Stalber, they have Flood that's holding up over there, as well as Snakers and Kamishki, and then also going to get Milta. So they should be quite looted moving into the later stages of this. Uh, a couple of moves early in Quarry is Petrichor Road already making a shift in. Uh, we have TL also sitting in a bit of scouting is Tai Lu, who's having a very good day today. Yeah, and I've noticed, like, it's not necessarily always 755, but we've seen Tai Lu said one member rotate early to kind of check things out, and then the rest of the team comes in. We've seen that from other teams as well. Uh, I've seen Twisted kind of do that a couple times today, but yeah, Tai Lu's been doing that very effectively all day today. It's kind of like the old school scouting strategy. Kind of, yeah. Well, you, day. you send the, the bait. <laughs> see what's like, go out there and see who shoots at and let us know where we can go. Oh, and speaking of. Look, see, look at all the information he's going to be able to provide back to the rest of Tyler. <laughs> That's very unfortunate. That was kind of a wide split there as well from the Expendables, but Duck yeah. Duck is going to find that kill. And Tyloo, although they're in first, not the best start to this game, but three up. They still have Shen. They should be all right. And in fairness to Ty Lu, the one-man scout in that situation, usually not too bad. It's just running. A, a, 
the old tempo storm split, right? They had four members of four different locations. Yeah. So whenever he drove in, they all just collapsed from different angles on it. So that's one of the reasons we did actually see it kind of die off is in a situation like that, you feel extremely vulnerable. Team's now coming in. It's, it's going to be a Twisted Minds. It looks like they're going to be regrouping around just that little bit of Everest yep. that is still inside the circle. We've seen this from them before, taking advantage of that. We, I mean, I used to do that as well all the time, especially this early in the circle. When you have the opportunity to take Everest and just scout, you pretty much see the entirety of the circle. A little bit of quarry in the south side, obviously not going to be able to uh, be seen. But yeah, that's just a great area to scout from. And, and we see that from them uh, time and time again. Falcons have already collapsed in onto the western side of Quarry Hillside, which means that Navi can kind of scooch in here for free. Don't have to worry about too much. Cerberus did go down to military base. They're going to be coming back along behind this one. Uh, 17 Gaming is pretty much in the thick of it. Get whatever they want. It looks like this is their priority target to go for. And it is very, very centered. No surprise, but we often see teams kind of lean more into the hillside but there is a right. lot of success to be had here. Yeah, no, this is a solid compound for them. Again, you're talking about that hillside just to their southwest, Llama Hill. Uh, so a lot of teams will tend to kind of wait before they send it up there because it can be a difficult position to hold early, especially if you're very central. But yeah, I like 17's position there as we also see uh, a split there on Llama with uh, what team? I believe that's actually Falcons. Yeah, Falcons is kind of running in from that compound that's just going to be to the east of where we see Quarry into the hillside itself. Server's now coming in. You can see D-plus Kia as well making their rotations. They're going to be coming right around the outside of Georgia Pole. No big targets as Twisted Minds do have their eyes set to the south, and it would really only be Batulans that could take shots right now. T5 did finally finish their looting phase. They're wrapping in onto the western side of Georgia Pole and the circle itself. TL now coming in. After their phenomenal amount of scouting, knows exactly where to stop to not die. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. And looking at the last teams to have yet to rotate in, we do have on the east side 4AM as well as LG and then FaZe making their way. I don't imagine they're going to have any issues finding their way into this circle. Uh, we'll see what it does on the next shift. And the shifts today have been pretty ridiculous. A lot of... <laughs> just back-to-back -back hard shifts opposite directional is kind of, yeah, specifically exactly big game and north to south chaotic. yeah if you see like a hard shift in like circle six and seven those suck but whenever it's like in circles it's three and four even circle one so uh, yeah. two to three yeah that, that's going to be a devastating shift we saw it happen on the on both miramar games actually uh so looking in you can see that this is kind of what we're looking at a lot of quiet not a lot of shooting uh I mean, this is just a tried and true errand go. Everybody knows exactly where to go. They know the power points that they want to be playing from. Uh, they know the sight lines that they're wanting to defend. So no big chaos coming out just quite yet, except for Little Ghost. Might be taking some shots and revealing himself to Emmy if he's not careful. Yeah, Falcons, again, on this hill, uh, we call it Llama because it does pretty much look like a Llama, right? Uh, as far as the outline, some people call it, I think, like Dodd. There's, there's a lot of names for it. Half of which we can't say because call, they're player named. Call, call it what you will. We'll just stick with Llama for now. But yeah, Falcons actually sneaking up behind uh, the team of 17 there. Potentially might catch Little Ghost off guard. It's a little peculiar because we were talking about usually we do see teams kind of shift more into the hillside. They took control over the compound, then sent two members up to the hillside to get the vision in. And now it looks like they're starting to shift back down a bit more into yeah, the hillside defensively. I mean, that's a fairly common uh, split. But again, this early, yeah, it's it can be troublesome for obvious reasons as we look at Falcons there potentially making a crest onto 17. Uh, we've got ourselves the, the rotators now coming in as four angry men going to be coming up alongside Potato Mountain itself. No targets in sight. FaZe has multiple members forward and in circle already, but Jeems is kind of back behind everybody. LG's going to be rotating next to him, but not in a scary way. I think that Jeems is kind of playing down in the recess of that bay, so we might see him try to do something tricksy here in a little while to regroup. Outside that, it's just GP, but let's be honest, GP needs to take the time to loot given how the early game went. Well, we're still in circle one. The, yeah. the, the first couple of seconds of the game. <laughs> the I first guess, couple, I yeah, say. when they lost two members pretty much instantaneously as LG, as you said, making the rotation in on the east. No issues really. Getting a little close to 4 a.m., but I imagine they're just going to break off. I do see that face is somewhat set up, though, to potentially take shots at these rotating teams in on the east crossroad. And uh, that's exactly what we're hearing now. That is going to be FaZe that's taking those pepper shots into him. Uh, four Angry Men coming in just to the north. Not going to be too scary, all considered right now, as it's, there's plenty of open space here, right? This is going to be the, the fields around Quarry to the east of it, the south Pachinki, however you want to describe them. It, it's, uh, there's a lot of vision to be had, and that's one of the reasons we're seeing LG show some hesitation in how they want to move into this. With those shots coming out from FaZe being out in the open, specifically coming into this circle late can be quite terrifying. 
Yeah, especially off of a bad shift, right? Coming in late on the rotations can be very problematic. Again, right now, everyone has pretty much found their way in, but even if this is just a central shift, it causes a lot of issues for the edge teams that become edge uh, as the circle does close. Everybody pretty much inside the circle now, except for Jeems and the two members of GP are going to be coming in from the north. Now, LG doing some scouting as we talked about before. And oh, hey, look, never mind. Jeems is inside the circle now. He's just going to do it a little bit okay. more of an aerial fashion. And this is just a friendly circle, let's be honest. It's, is it, though? I mean, it's got a lot of flat land in it. We've got chopsticks, but most of our team's not having to move too much. Yeah, but this is going to condense a lot of these teams so much quicker than I'm sure they would have wanted to, especially with how much water was actually in. And look at this now. As you're pointing out, FaZe and LG getting dangerously close to each other. FaZe was playing in this position just a moment ago. They shifted more to the west. They're going to step away. LG spots this. So now kind of positional reversed. It's going to be LG that was defending up, taking shots into FaZe as FaZe is going to be cutting up. Remember, Jeems did come into this a bit more aerial. He found himself a landing point that's pretty close to where we see 17 at, and that's where the rest of FaZe is trying to regroup with him at the time. Uh, we start to see a bit more of attention being sent chopstick sided as well as Forest, as well as Twisted Mind starting to look into that direction as FaZe does manage to regroup feeling better about it. And Na'Vi, pretty similar pathing, so we'll have to see where they end up stopping. I do worry about this next shift as a lot of the circle is fairly open. Like, yes, uh, there is a lot to play with, Na'Vi. but they're driving actually right into FaZe and Ollie's already, or excuse me, Mill's already down. Ooh. Ooh, that was a trap waiting to happen. Jeems finally does go down, but this has been a very face sided firefight so far. And with that, Uba's just got to turn around and go back and say, OK, well, uh, I guess it's a safety game from here on out, right? Well, I mean, Navi has gotten second, I think, in almost every game. So this may be the one game they finally start to fall. But as you said, Uba's still alive. so. It could make something happen currently oh, in second place. 17 hears this. They're moving aggressively yeah. into the position, realizing that they can use this. Chunking out the nades, they already know where the smokes are gone down at. So using that, thing, maybe they can fish with some dynamite, pick something up. They're not going to overextend, but not going to get too rewarded with those nades. Just, ooh, man, that is a knock. Is that going to be something they're going to follow up on? They don't want to get too aggressive because they do have TE that's next to them yeah. as well. As a, if there were four in this position, I'm almost positive they would push, but only as a duo actually shot. Ooh, is going to go down as expendables right behind you. We're calling it. It's just the nature of the beast in this hillside. Hey, we're not done yet. 17's going to counter it back. Now with 17 losing one, trying to figure out, okay, how much more of this do we want? And this is just a catalyst that started off with Navi, and it is just not yet stopped. Is finally, I think everybody's going to separate out and go, okay, just lick our wounds, regroup, figure out what's going on. Even Lil Go saying, no, dude, look, don't even try to drive back. It's too risky. Yeah, he's going to pick him up. Or run back, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's going to pick him up, save him for the run back. They did lose one, but I think they got at least a point or two off of that. So 17 will come out of that decently, but yeah, losing a member there was 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 not the, was not ideal. I mean, the biggest beneficiary is FaZe. You can see on the leaderboard, they were just neck and neck with four angry men. Those three points being big right now, putting them much closer into the Cerberus line as while it is a, uh, I, I don't, they managed to prep up, they managed to fend up, good positioning on it. It's, uh, we're gonna have to keep an eye as this is a very strong position depending on how these circles go. If we continue to see this center up, they're gonna have so much vision on what's going on to the south of them in that field. It is difficult though to hold this from a center, Matt. And you, yeah. I mean, we do know this, we've seen it before. Having these central positions, especially in that forest south of chopsticks can be, uh, it can be a detriment, especially when you have so many teams around you like 4AM, like the Expendables. Again, 17 just off to the south and Sarvan to the north but Sarvan's not going to push. They have that really nice compound. Twisted Minds now making their rotation, leaving their mountaintop and coming down Gatka. They managed to do their scouting. Looks like they're just going to crest right in between. Circle pops perfectly, and you know that's the way that Twisted Minds wanted it. That's the way that they timed it. The way that they did, they're going to find themselves a very open hillside with just TE. Remember, TE is running a 2-1-1 split. Is They have just been pretty separated, taking a lot of control over the circle for the entirety of this game so far. I thought maybe Twisted might stop there on that hilltop and try to take the fight, but they're actually just going to get this house for a relative free but Expendables are going to be able to see that nade. Not quite enough distance. Oh, what? Oh. But, but Tulin, are you good? It's fine. He's just a little bit dizzy. He'll be okay. He's going to jump out, and the rest of the team should be able to regroup. 777 wishing that he could have gotten a bit more out of that. That was a wicked kickflip, I will say so myself. No. Very impressive. I, what, we at least should give him a point for that one, right? That's, that's, that was hard. Kickflips in the side of a U. In a, in a UAZ, which I cannot wait to turn mine into an Aston. I have, oh. dude, I haven't even played the new patch yet. I want to play so bad. So they're so pretty. They're so so pretty in this one. Um, and now we see the GP 
Oh no, are they, now they're gonna bump into TE, who's been the aggressors for everything. Then he got right past the duo. He does manage to dodge a bit of those, but remember 17's just There's up There's nowhere to go. Twisted Minds, this is not the opportune path thing that you wanna be taking. Already getting shot, they're gonna crest back up that hillside, but remember TE is still over there. That's gonna be Daku already down, it's just gonna be Hush with a smidgen of life, but nowhere to go, just a dream and in front of them, it's gonna be SRM, Global Army leading the way. Gonna take a couple of shots, that's gonna shift them down, and guess what? Now it's gonna be four angry men sight lines. Yeah. Is, this is just, this is so hard. I would say more of a nightmare than a dream, but yeah. Hush and the rest of GP just kind of lost after losing those first two members, doing whatever they can to try to stay alive. That nade is gonna be almost enough. As Hush is not making the push, he knows he needs to at least get a point or something here. Uh, trying to show some hesitation on it and trying to get a read. He doesn't know exactly. There haven't been a lot of deaths right now, but you have to shoot that this is a weakened team. And yeah. hey, he'll take that one. Crazy's going to step away from it, pick up his free point, and going to make him feel a little bit better on the leaderboard as well. And we haven't even really talked about I mean, we, we kind of mentioned it earlier, but a lot of players often use the, you know, the, the MK-12, the, the AUG obviously being a disgusting gun right now. And we've seen a lot of that kick. Meanwhile, going to find HSMM. Nice little knock there for himself as they're playing on the east side of this. Uh, Rello actually made a reposition after those shots and moved just south of where four angry men are at. Forrest are going to run right through four angry men, and Crazy's going to find himself another knock. And probably going to be a kill in just one second. HSMN did go down right before this one, though, so can't be too aggressive. And we've got a lot of teams that are all encroaching on this vector. TE now taking the shots into Forrest as they're continuing their rotation out. If they can manage to make it past this gauntlet, the only thing they have to worry about is the tail end, where LG will get some range division on them and start taking some shots. But 15 now also spotting as well. Remember we were talking about how much it sucks to drive around inside the spiel after everybody's entrenched. You're now seeing one. Yeah, and this is this is the, my biggest worry with the circle, especially with experience playing it, is just rotating here sucks, especially when there's so many teams already in those uh, those forced positions. Is now looking at this shift. This is a very open circle, Matt. Forced sneaking by with a good position in a bad circle just due to their rotation. The problem with it is they've got Falcons just to the south of them. They've got 17 just to the north. LG is eyeing much closer into that 4AM sight line, realizing, hey, you know, it's much better to take the fight now, but it looks like crazy. He's just on fire right now, man. But let's not forget about Jeems. The rest of Faye is realizing where that reposition came out, taking some shots, going to hit one of them, knock him down, and Forrest, I don't, they can't even make it up into the trees. Is this, this is just going to be hard. Yeah, hell raining from above phase with just all the utility in the world and no pressure on them. Falcons have obviously backed up off of this, and so Master is just stuck. Scappy, I would be very surprised if he able to get him up as he's burning, and that's going to be it. Viking Funeral sends him on his way out. Rello does manage to hit H. Oh, hey, look, Forrest gets also another member go down, and just one alive, and that's going to be poor old Munto, who's out in the middle of nowhere and not even inside the safe zone yet, but he's taking shots at the backside of LG, which is kind of forcing more of that fight between them and four angry men. Flood did a great flank up to that eastern area, but he can smile down. It's gonna be Lula gets him, but a crazy dude! Oh. He is just on a tear right now, finally going down. It's gonna be Rello that takes him and opens up some opportunity because three kills and phase number four already. Finally, LG is also gonna go like down. That. LG just taking care of 4 a.m., just decimating them. I mean, I like the idea on what LG was trying to commit into there, but it's just, I don't know what's going on with 4 a.m., but Crazy is just unrelenting right now. Yeah, they are caught on the east edge, though, and so they're still going to have to fight through Sarthum, who have taken control of that position that TE actually gave up to get more of a central compound. Uh, you can hear some shots going out, and that's going to be in Munto's direction as he's kind of holed out over there. Uh, TE in a strong position right now. The four angry men starting their rage build as it feels like they start to get into a berserker rage. If they start to pick up this many kills early, just bloodlust starts to overtake them, and they start to see more. It does come at a cost, though, as they are going to lose one of their members. It's going to be Global Army yet again finding a shot into this one. They should be able to follish it off. And so four angry men find themselves gate-kept out by SRM and 17 on a different angle. Yeah, and this, this force does become yeah, quite difficult, right? especially when it's edge out. Munto is going to go down. Yep, the blue. Uh, while all this has been going on, we did see Falcons kind of regroup into the south. Uh, Uba is still alive, but Cerberus, I believe, spotted him, and he's chilling outside in the blue as well. Uh, so are weakened teams not finding a way to even creep into these circles? 
No, and again, this circle is so difficult to play in. With those rotations, we've seen how many people tried to drive through that forest. It didn't work out for them. I will say the south has been relatively quiet, though, Matt. Most of the action we've seen has been to the east as well as the northeast as the circle once again shifts and gives the expendables an amazing position. But my eyes are glued to the south where phase are because that is going to be where the majority of the fighting is about to happen. That phase hillside, depending on how we see DK make shifts around, could be big. In addition to that, Falcons are going to have to make some type of pathing right next to Petrico Road. Cerberus and never ever count out Uba back there. Uh, crazy, he's probably gonna do a wrap into the north if he can even do that. I mean, SRM is just beat it in on him. They realize that there's an opportunity to be had and they want to at least pick up that point. Well, S uh, some of them really just need to start kind of focusing on what their next play is for. They should be able to see that those kind of two, uh, the, the two story and the one story next to it should be open there in the compound just to the northeast of the Expendables. But again, I'm really curious what Falcon's next play is here as well as Petrichor and even Cerberus. They're going to have to push towards the top of Llama to take that. Cerberus actually can play the west side though if they don't want to crest. This is also going to be pretty interesting for Twisted Minds to contend with. While uh, kick flips are, are really cool to watch, not so great for your vehicles, as uh, even taking a vehicle at this stage could be quite problematic. They've got 17 that's very close to them. Blue Ghost already moved into the hillside, so while they're focused in on that, we talked about phase and their positioning and how that's going to be popping off in a second. You can see the crest up coming up from the Falcons. The hillside fight's going to start coming to be a factor. Little Ghost, though, is more focused in on what's going on with the Falcons. Instead, Falcons Draft King managed to spot out Corexi, so that could open up a bit more opportunity opportunity. I'm just really concerned for the Falcons in the approach, even taking down a phase member. Little Ghost could be a massive problem. For well, it's not even just Little Ghost. It's going to be the rest yeah. of that team, as this is pretty much the best wrap they have to them, right? Uh, just if they were just to go in the circle, there's really not that much cover, and it's all downhill. As Himas is going to find one, but the nade's coming back. Tycon getting absolutely bombarded. While this is happening, it's going to be Twisted Minds to hop in their vehicle, cut across. That means that DK is going to be distracted by that. Gustav's got to turn back around. Opens up more opportunities for the Cerberus Petrichor road fight to start to take off. Uba's still back behind it. Molotov going to be right on top of Tycon, but not going to be enough to even... It's going to be uncomfortable, let's say that. 17 Gaming now making their flank down into the Falcons, and it is just going political for them right now. Xiao Bei getting a nice knock. The 17 just kind of picking apart Falcons, but they're going to run into FaZe. Jeeves <laughs> going to find a knock on Xiao Bei. Little Ghost also going down, but that is it for FaZe as well as the Falcons. We aren't quite done yet. Cerberus trying to regroup. 17 just trying to run, get ahead of the blue zone. Managed to pick up their teammate, have managed to get ahead of it as well. Petrichor Road has gotten an eye on what's going to be going on with Cerberus. Well, this is all going to be happening. Uba's going to go down to the blue zone. We have a fight that's kind of starting to take off between TE as well as SRM into the northeast, but there's a lot of moving factors that are happening down in the south. What happened with Twisted Minds as well as DK had one of their members go down on Twisted Minds that slowed them. And you can see with the blue zone coming in, 17 can't even stop. They've just got to run the entirety of the way and wait to try to met up. Xiaobei has been picked up like three times by Suja now, just trying <laughs> to find somewhere where he's going to be able to res him. But on the other side of this Petrichor, they're about to peek over and I think just get rid of 17 off this map. Oh, cresting right up into the hillside. They There's no way he doesn't so see him. But now that the res has gone through, their heads popped up, and I think that Petrichor Road stopped. Yeah, they're going to now step back away from it. They realize him and XLF are going to play in for that angle. Summer is still looking towards the circle to make sure that nobody wraps in back behind them. Nade's going to go down. 17 still has to continue their foot push and race into the circle, but that's going to be right into the waiting arms of Twisted Mind. I haven't seen a circle end on, on the tip, on the north tip of Llama in a long, long while. And it can be fun to fight on, to be honest if you're on the north side or even on the south like there's so many different elevations you kind of mess with coming up on the west side of the hill making up that crest but a lot of the teams i'm glued again to the northeast man all those teams in the compound as we see twisted get eliminated and it's going to be 17 that out survives them but not for too much longer spray is going to come out from petrichor road who down inside of what was it a second ago they were down in what in that 14th position i believe finally starting to find some life for themselves as it looks like they're finally finding themselves the road to victory or at least a couple more points. And Tycon now equipped with that SLR just running face first into Deva. He's going to go down as well as him ass. Oh no, SRM's going to make a quick rotation right into Tyloo. Good defended position is going to be lined up as looks like they're throwing out smokes to so block. Blue zone right there, I believe. 
looks like, uh, yep, we're going to go ahead and get a couple of shots into it. And yep, Blue Zone's going to come up right back behind him. And now Tai Lu Shin going to use that opportunity creeping in. Three members down for SRM. It doesn't feel like there's too much more to go. Global Army, you got yourself some big plays, but it's going to be significantly outnumbered, even though you are an oh, army in of his pocket. Tai Lu has gotten rid of Sarvum, and now look at the Expendables, Matt. They are making so the push. They know this is their window of opportunity. Expendables so hot right now as they're going to creep out of this one. Know exactly where to go. Del one drops nade right on top of Longs. With this, they're going to have so much freaking control over yes. the circle. Petricor Road trying to come up back behind them, taking some shots. If anything, it's just kind of forcing this a bit more. But Petricor, they're going to actually be able to crest right over this and see this fight and potentially take a lot of damage or put a lot of damage onto the side of the expendables not to mention d plus kia has been quiet on the south challenge doing a great job of staying alive doing some damage he's finally going to go down but that opened up the opportunity for petrichor wrote aixlip mill moving in more aggressive dk also trying to use this opportunity playing the opposite side of the hill so te knows they need to get themselves into a better position they need to get their meds they need to get everything back together as fast as possible because it is just down into a technical 3v3 v3 right now and they want to get that member back up I feel like D plus Kier here has the advantage as long as, well, I say that, and Petrichor is starting to back up now, but in that third-party situation, they would have been the benefactors as now the circle has shifted and it's going to be on the hilltop, so the Expendables will also have to make this push up. Expendables did get their res, so they can start moving into the hillside. Looks like they are going to be playing more into the west, no surprise, given the control that we see on the eastern side of the hill with Petrichor Road like this, you never know. Go ahead and take out the tires, take out whatever you can on the vehicles, just to be safe as Petrichor Road sitting at their five kills, now going to have to be careful as DK is starting to encroach right into the thick of them, right next to Aixlift as well as Summer. I mean, they are literally on top of each other, just on the other side, Minuto with a nade out. Tanvu sees it. He's starting to take some shots into uh, Kia, and that's going to force them away from that angle. If anything, that means that David now realizes he needs to play safer back behind this one, and Petrichor Road is just so close to them. They, they could pretty much just bite each other. Well, this becomes, again, a case of whoever fights first is probably going to lose because yeah. that third party, especially from a full four, or excuse me, not a full four, three members of the Expendables here on the on the west side of this should be able to get a good advantage uh, vantage point on the teams that are about to fight. And Expendables, while they did lose a tire on the vehicle, still gets them exactly where they need to go is they're going to get the crest and the hillside to work around. Petrogor Road's mill still staying back and kind of keeping an eye on what's going on in Tanvu, but not too much more happening out of this. This hill is kind of given each one of these teams. It's more almost more like a pyramid than it is a hill with the way that it's kind of set out as it's created sightline blocks for each one of these guys to give them their own areas to play from. But it looks like DK is wanting to lean far more into the TE sightlines now. And D plus Kia has just been honestly so passive in this yeah. game, in this circle, and it's kind of been their MO so far. I, I would have really liked to see them get a little more aggressive when they had the opportunity to. Now, obviously, it's staled out, but yeah, they had the chance to maybe get some frags there, and, and they just kind of lost it. There is a risk with the Expendables getting control of that center point, having Duck Juice hop inside the vehicle and move in as they could end up pinched in this one. With the way that we see Petrichor Road's line come out on that eastern front, and now we can see that DK is trying to get more control over the south. If a fight breaks out, TE is going to be probably the one being shot at, and they're going to have to deal with flanked positions on one side or the other. True, but I still do like 777's position as he is that anchor point, but Mill is laser focused on his position right now. Yeah, this is uh, Summer now also making sure that nothing goes on with Kia sneaking up back behind them. Um, Mill, slow and steady, wins the race right now. Is just, it, it's a commitment, right? This is almost more of a mind game and a game of chicken as we're not even into phase number nine yet. No, and the reason why none of these teams want to fight again is because of the fact that the first team to fight is going to get third partied, right? And so yeah. they want to be the ones that are initiating that third party, not the ones that are getting, you know, third partied on. See a lot of smokes now starting to come out and it's just an, an eerie set of silence. It's just settled onto the battlefield right now. And if anything, that just amps up the anxiety. You're, you don't have good vision on what's going on because the hillside, every bullet is the way you can place what's going on around you. And that's about it. And with nobody yep. really taking shots, 
you, you just kind of have to assume you have an idea on how they're moving based off of how you know the map functions. And as a player, this is very nerve-wracking, right? Because yeah. you're, you're looking for that angle. You want to make sure that you can maybe watch all the angles that your team isn't, if, especially if you're an anchor like 777. But again, the waiting game was always my least favorite. I would much rather be in the thick of a firefight rather than waiting for the circle to close, waiting for another team to make a mistake. The longer it stays quiet like this, it's just going to continue to mount, add more pressure. Every tree just becomes a per uh, that's going to have a person behind it. Every dip in the hill, you're having to double check, triple check, because places you checked before, somebody could have snuck into that position already. You can see TE now starting to be a bit more mobile. Mill did move out of his position, wanting to play still into that southeastern corridor. That The one section of the hill that they have control over is now TE starting to make much more of a defensive line in the south as Petrichor Road is also making that commitment in the south. And so now it's not TE that's being the potential of pinched, it's Kia. Look, yeah. And again, it's just the passiveness of D plus Kia is, it's a little baffling to me. Fun. I mean, and, and this one, I don't know what else you could potentially do, but it's the quiet just settled in. And I, TE, with that shift on both of those teams, with Petrichor Road and D plus Kia, now they've got so much control over the circle. And you can see everybody's just sloping. Look at the way you can see somebody step forward and then step back, afraid of where a headshot's going to come. Jump in, see if you spot out anything. Every little bit of information that you get also means that you're probably also going to reveal something and potentially kill yourself. Yeah, and as you said, they, they've pretty much not stopped at all TE from just getting closer and closer and closer because they're just afraid to peek over that ridge. Here we go. Blue's coming in. No more time to be passive. You've got to make something happen. Throwable's coming out, and it's going to be DK looking up this hillside. Summer, the rest of the crew now starting to look in. Nate is going to get some damage but not enough to determine what's going to happen next. DK with that little bit of damage, though, now starting to eye back into the Expendables line. Expendables still holding them right there. So much of what we're going to be looking at is going to be hinging on what's happening with Duck Juice and his defensive line against Petrichor Road. Tanbu, Delwin also moving. Get Vision, get the knock into one of them. But now with that, they should be aware of the flank and how it's going to be happening. Petrichor Road should be using this opportunity to start to creep up the opposite hillside, and that's what they're going to be doing. Duck Juice has got to defend that to the best of his capabilities. Tanbu, the rest of the team, they need to clean this up as fast as possible. Just Americano, the last one up. They know it. They get the spray. It's completed. But now it's Petrichor Road running down. But Duck Juice hits the shot on the summer. That's going to open up the door. The duo over here for the Expendables trying to make it happen. At 11 kills, they want even more. x going to go down. And it is just Bill. Looks back down into this one. And there you go. Yeah, very impressive stuff there from the Expendables. Duck Juice, again, being that anchor that they needed to have in order to hold off that push from Petrichor. And again, just really well played from the boys.